Welcome back to the Stadium of Light, Sunland Rescue, a point at the very end of the game, thanks to Patrick Roberts, who came on for an injured Tommy Watson in the first half. First half was exciting, second half not so much, Danny, but Sunland, as I said, rescuing a point at the very end. Yeah, I think worst case, that's what you take. You know, when you're getting down to the last few minutes of the game, obviously we chucked Dan Ballard there. He's almost going to got the winner, actually, hasn't he? But... Uh, no, sometimes you dig in and you have to, you know, don't get beat. Let's just say that. And, you know, if we do go to Swansea at the weekend and pick up three points, then seven isn't a bad return. But, yeah, overall, I think first off, as you say, we had a good sort of 15, 20 minute spell where we had a lot of pressure in their box. And as you say, that injury to Tommy maybe just interrupted us a little bit and lost the flow of the game. Uh, and they came back into it a little bit. Setting off similar, really. We didn't really get going. I think Chris Riggs had one or two opportunities. We stopped getting the ball out wide. Meander had a couple of good moments. Um, driving past the full back and then as you say there they go and get that goal and it's, it's a bit of a mess isn't it defensively from our point of view uh, and you think oh no here we go first defeat of the season at home but if you don't want to give the boys credit they dug in got back into it and took a point let's have a look at the highlights because other than that opportunity they had to score the goal which was kind of yeah, they didn't create from, it from a they? rebound yeah. wasn't it it yeah. wasn't really created uh, there wasn't many opportunities for Bristol City this evening at all no not at all no I think if you're obviously looking at the first half Sinclair Armstrong had that one from a tight angle Chris Metton comes across which we'll, we'll see in a moment I think um, and then that one second half and it's not really an opportunity they've created as such as it it's ball bouncing round bit of panic in there we, we're getting each other's way a little bit and it pops out to the centre back McNally and, and credit to him it's a decent finish Um but yeah, this is where, you know, I thought Adji at times in the first half trying to get forward. Well, he's unlucky with this one. The centre back puts the brakes on and it just runs out of play. But again, a few minutes later, he goes now, touch out of his feet, lovely ball in. Wilson just can't quite get on the end of it. So we're having a good spell here now. We, we up the tempo a little bit and I think that's something we've got to do. Listen, it's, it's difficult to do it for 90 minutes where you keep, you know, hammer and tongs, keep going, keep going. You, you, sometimes you have to slow it down to try and play through them to entice them out. But. When, you, when we do move it with, with a bit of purpose and wrap it into each other, play through the lines a little bit more, that's when we seem to, to get the better of the opposition. Uh, and I thought at this stage in the game we were doing that and we mixed it up. Look, Wilson, again, running in behind, didn't perhaps see it enough throughout the 90 minutes, balls over the top, really. It was too comfortable in the second half with the two centre-backs, I felt. Um, and then there he is again. So he was quiet in spell, like he was at the weekend, and then all of a sudden he's involved quite heavily, like he was at the weekend when he had that free kick, and then the one he should have scored with. So he'll be frustrated, I think, Wilson, that he's, he's, he's dried up at this moment in time, but he is getting opportunities. So, you know, sometimes you worry when your strikers aren't in there, getting the end of things, and we're not putting ball in the box, but we are doing that. So I'm sure it'll come good for him. He just needs to get going again. Meander, I thought, had a good night. Got to be honest, I think, you know, he played on the right-hand side. You see there, he almost gets us going. We almost take the lead in this situation. We have three or four goes at it. Credit to Bristol City, they're throwing bodies in the way and getting the blocks in. And McNally, this is where Tommy gets the injury, isn't it? There, that little back heel, and it's that block tackle. Great firm challenge from their point of view. What's the best we're hoping for there? Like an impact injury? Yeah, yeah, hoping so. What is it now? It's Tuesday, so you got Wednesday, Thursday. So you're looking at three, four days before that game. And as you say there, you don't think, well, you're hoping it's not ligament. And he's, he's walked about 300 metres around the pitch from the far side, hasn't he? Which is a good sign. So yeah, you're hoping Tommy's OK and he can uh, can be involved at the weekend. And there's, there's that one again, isn't it? We've seen a, a few replays of it. Um, but it's good movement, that's when we're at our best. You see there, we're getting bodies in there, you want rig in there, you know, Job's getting at his edge of the box for bits, Dan Neal, there's your three centre midfielders all involved around the edge of the box there, trying to get themselves on the score sheet. Um, yeah, and as you say, at the, the remainder of the first half, they had very little opportunity and it was quiet for Anthony Patterson. Um, let's have a look at this one again here now. This is Job, isn't it? Yeah, big deflection on that one over the top. Uh, I thought Job, again, good energy tonight trying to get us going, trying to drive the team forward, you know, for a young lad, was he 19 now, isn't he, Job, I think he is, um, just full of energy, strong runner, and, uh, yeah, no, it's just, you know, he's a, he's a big part of us in the middle of the field, isn't he, just ahead of Dan Neal, but he drops in at times to get on it, setting off late on, you see him there, taking the ball off the centre-back, saying, no, no, come on, we're not getting beat this evening, let's get on the front foot, let's go and get a goal, and there's the big shout, isn't it, it's the big one. That's what the fans it. will be talking about. <sighs> I'm still not sure. You well, know, we've had how many fans asking us? That one that people are saying like handball. handball. It's off the badge, I'd say, isn't it? Which is that deemed these days as not handball. I'd say, I don't know from that angle there. I, I think, naturally, if he gives it, I wouldn't argue it. That's the thing. But he, he doesn't give it. And then I'm looking at it. I think, is there enough in it? So I'm not sure. 
again, I'd love to see that one if it went to VAR, what, they, what they'd make of it, to be honest with you. But I'm not sure if there's enough in that one there. And as you say, Adji grabs the ball and sometimes that makes the ref's mind up. But no, he stands strong and he, he doesn't give it and gives the free kick the other way. My end of this and time on again, the, yeah, the second half, isn't it? Fizzes this one across and you see there, it's just in between bodies, isn't it? Chris Riggs just outside the six-yard box and it's fizzed just in front of him. Dan Neal stands a good ball up. Yeah, far post and just pops up, doesn't it? I think Chris Metton thinks that Knight's going to deal with it and he actually misses it. He's trying to flick it out the far side and just skips up onto him. Um, but it was like fits and starts in the second half and then, well, is, is this their goal now, is it? Yeah, what we... We get caught a little bit there, the ball's gone back and we squeezed up, but we're not just keeping an eye on things, what's happened to The ball's flipped over the top and we've got two uh, Bristol City players there to deal with. And then it's just bouncing around, I think, as we see it now from this one behind the goal where Dan Ballard's gone to clear it there. Not, so all of a sudden, why we've got Patrick Roberts in the left-back position with two men. Ball's played in, I think it's Earthy that just pops it in, or is it Bell? Not sure. Ballard goes to clear it, does the right thing in terms of trying to clear it, but Viner just charges it down. And then Adji, unfortunately, similar to like... Sheffield United where he flicked out that night and it, and it dropped to Tom Davis well this one here he flicks out at it and he just pops it out on that far side straight to McNally the big centre back good composure touch out of his feet and so just places it into the roof of the net and, well, is it against the run of play I'd say so in the fact that you know, Anthony Patterson has had a save to make in the second half and all of a sudden he's picking the ball out of his net yeah and that was in the 61st minute and they begin to think, is it going to be one of those nights for Sunderland? Then they turn it up a little bit, don't they? Yeah, well, this is... Chris Rigg has about three opportunities here in the space of five minutes, doesn't he? See, that one there was pulled back to him. That one he flicks out with his right foot. And we had so many of these moments in the, in the first half and the second now where it's, it's not quite dropping. Another night that drops for him in front of him. He hasn't got to play it. See there, it's just behind him. And he's got to try and flick it uh, into that far corner. I think it's Dan Neal on the follow-up, the shot gets blocked. I thought Dan was excellent tonight, yeah, by the way. Well. Yeah, taking us over there, controlling the game, getting us, you know, similar to Joe, trying to drive us forward, not giving up in that second half as well. And his train out, this is another one, Chris Rigg, good defending from Knight, gets the block in. Um, so, so you can see there, it's difficult when teams are sitting, obviously sitting deep and they've got bodies in there and they're, they're throwing themselves at it, making it hard for us. It's a big opportunity, by the way, Mimetti on the counter, does the hard part. Chops inside Chris Meppham, goal opens up for him. And you see him there now, his reaction says it all. Massive opportunity for, for their leading goal scorer. Well, as my ender working hard again, then pulls it back for Job. Just really open up fully for Chris. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that was his last involvement, wasn't it? So that's yep. his third opportunity there. And you see Job just leaves it there for him. Edge of the box, does he slip slightly, possibly? Yeah, ends up there. And I think that's, uh, that's the end of Chris Rigg, isn't it? And this one for Job, yeah, straight into the gloves. The keeper as it drops it in takes there, a big Patrick. deflection on the way through, doesn't yeah. it? Takes the sting out of it. I think it's McNally who it hits on the way through. Another one here now, we've got a little bit more direct. Yeah, so we come off the bench here now, O'Shish, and he's always involved in the game last season or wherever he's coming. He's always in the thick of the action, something always seems to happen with him. That one there, touch just gets away and it's spinning on his weaker left foot, doesn't get any purchase on it. Um, Job now putting one back in. Dan Ballard's forward, isn't he? And then Meander thinks he scored. I think it's Dickey just does enough in front of him there. Flicks it out the far side. And that's, that's the stage in the game. I'd said it on it. Time to throw Dan Ballard forward. Um, get some balls in there. See if he calls himself a bit of a nuisance for the opposition. And this is another one. Yes, he's there. Is it Viner just gets across him? Good defending. Just sees it back to the keeper. Um, but we'll see the one with Dan Ballard after we get the uh, after we get the equaliser. He has a he has an opportunity, doesn't he, in a moment? But they kept on going, the boys. That's what you can say. And obviously, a few of the fans were leaving, thinking that's the end of it. But here we go now. Patrick's involved, doesn't he? Comes across the pitch, looking for looking to try and thread, thread a ball into feet there. But you see how tight we've got six red and white striped shirts across the box there. Out to Oshish, goes past his man. They'll be disappointed. It's too easy that from Bell. I think the sub there doesn't do enough to stop the cross from their point of view. You see him and our young lad come on. He actually showed good energy going forward, pressing, but look there, squared up 1v1. Their manager won't be happy with that into Patrick. And it's a great finish it's, to be fair. It's fair. a really yeah. tight angle, isn't it? Well, it is, because if he goes low there, I think the keeper saves it, doesn't he? Because, you know, he's, he's got nothing to work with. The keeper up against the post, but the keeper's low, it's and then he just angle. smashes it into the roof of the net. And uh, yeah, made up for Patrick. It's been difficult for him in terms of goals. Missed the penalty, obviously at Sheffield United, but he's uh, he's earned us a point this evening. And then, and is, is that then one there was Ballard? an opportunity. Yeah. For one more yeah. stretch. Well, it's hard as it is. The cross is deflected, and he knows what he's got to try and do. Ballard, he's got to put his neck through and try and flick it up and over 
O'Leary and he does really well the keeper just to get the get the glove on it and touch it over the top so did we do enough to win it I think we had good chances this evening um, it's frustrating uh, change room it'll be in there now but it's a, it's a good point on the balance of things in terms of where we're at in the stage of the game when we go and get the goal um, into deep into stoppage time so yeah points on the board now we've got to go and get three at Swansea Let's have a look at the latest scores from this evening's fixtures if we can and then we'll go straight into the league table Burnley were there were held to a draw that helps Sunderland out a bit nil nil against Derby struggling Derby County probably a, a much uh, more better point for Derby, obviously. Luton Town, they won 2-1 against Stoke. Plymouth beaten again, this time by Swansea City, where Sunderland go at the weekend. Portsmouth, they were 0-0 against Norwich City. Sheffield Wednesday were beaten at home by Blackburn Rovers to a, by a goal to nil. Leeds winning 3-1 at home against Middlesbrough. The rest of those fixtures are played tomorrow. What does that do to the league table? Well, Sunderland sit in fourth that's where they were at the start of the day Blackburn Rovers behind them on 34 points above them Burnley's point keeps them above Sunderland and uh, Sheffield United played, and Leeds because tomorrow. Sheffield United played Mil Millwall away I think tomorrow wasn't it Millwall yeah. tomorrow and they've, uh, Neil Harris has been that's right yeah um, and then obviously Blackburn got a game in hand so they're, they're creeping along aren't they Blackburn just in behind us as well with a game in hand so yeah it's getting tight in there on big winners tonight Leeds United OK, Sunderland avoid defeat in the very last few moments of tonight's game. Where does Sunderland go next? Well, they go down to South Wales at the weekend. They play Swansea here on Saturday. That's a 3pm kickoff, which means we'll be on air from 2.15 here on SAFC Live. We'll see you then.